how do I properly sharpen my GoPro footage? Why can't I get my GoPro footage to look like the GoPro footage that GoPro themselves put out? Why does my GoPro footage suck? These are the questions that I've looked into for literally years trying to figure them out because it drove me nuts. And I've been using GoPro cameras since the very first GoPro Hero. So here's the video. Here's the video that's going to answer those questions and it's going to show you my GoPro Hero 10 settings and my general editing workflow. Here we go. Why don't you become a local? All right, the main point of this video is going to be how to sharpen your GoPro footage. And for that, we're gonna be using DaVinci Resolve. And don't worry, the program is free. All right, first off, before we get into that, I'm going to show you my GoPro Hero 10 settings. I'm gonna rip through that, and then I'm going to show you my general workflow and what I do to my footage before I sharpen it in DaVinci Resolve, which should be your final step. All right, so your GoPro Hero 10 settings, let's fly through them real quick. I'm just gonna be talking about the ProTune settings, so let's go. So for ProTune, you're gonna to wanna to put the bit rate at high, the shutter at auto, EV comp at negative 0.5. For white balance, you're gonna to wanna to be at auto or a specific white balance based on what you're shooting. ISO minimum at 100, ISO maximum at 1600. Sharpness at low, color at natural. Raw audio on high, wind is auto. When it comes to resolution, lens, and hyper smooth, use high resolutions at high frame rates for slow motion or stick to 30 frames per second. GoPro also has 4-3 aspect ratio options for resolution, which allows you to use the full sensor of the GoPro and gives you the highest quality. For lens, you want to pay attention to either wide, linear, or linear plus horizon leveling. For HyperSmooth 4.0, you want to use standard or high. You can use boost in certain situations depending on what you need for stabilization. When it comes to shooting video on your GoPro, light is extremely important and plays a huge role in the quality of your footage. The more light that you have when you're shooting, the better your footage is going to turn out regardless. And that goes for all cameras in general, especially for GoPros. You also want to think about how you're going to mount it, whether it's going to be POV or mounted on a board or a car, or if you're just going to be shooting standard footage. So in the description below, I'm going to put a link to an article on the best GoPro Hero 10 settings for specific things done by Abe Kisselbitz. It's really, really good. It helps a lot. So check that out. Also, if you are editing GoPro footage that was shot in the 4.3 aspect ratio, I will put a link in the description below on how to stretch that 4.3 clip into a 16 by 9 timeline in Final Cut Pro. And also another link done by Abe Kisselwitz on how to do that in Adobe Premiere Pro. First things first, let's jump into Final Cut Pro so I can show you how I start out editing my footage. Remember, I'm using low sharpening on my GoPro. Here we are in Final Cut Pro, and I have a clip that I reframed in Adobe Premiere Pro of me wakeboarding on some glassy water. This clip was shot in 4K at 60 frames per second in the 4-3 aspect ratio, and I stretched it in Premiere Pro. So I have my sequence here. My sequence is set up for 1080p HD, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, Apple ProRes 422. I have my clip here that I was talking about. The first couple of things that I'll do to this clip is the first thing is I will color correct it. Now I'm not going to go in to color grading right now since this video is just based on sharpening. I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I do to my GoPro clips to enhance clarity and to clean it up before I sharpen it. So I color graded with Color Finale Pro version two. And this is the raw clip right here. So here is the grade that I did on this specific clip. Now you'll notice that down here, um, because of the water color, uh, it actually makes these clouds and the reflection a lot greener than they actually are. So we'll go to the original clip that I did for YouTube. And I actually fixed that and I brought up the shadows a little bit. And now this matches this. The general idea is you want to raise your shadows, drop your midtones. You want to add a curve or contrast to your clip, exposure if it needs it, and then adjust your white balance um, just to make it look more natural or if it's off. Um, and then you can create masks, which I actually did on this clip to fix the white balance of the water. You can also adjust specific colors, like I can only adjust red or green or blue. 
Uh, you can adjust the color of it, the saturation, the brightness of it, but that is just a general idea of what I do when it comes to color grading. So these are pretty much the same. I did this one right now, this first one just really fast because um, it's not sharpened yet. Since this one is the one that is all the way done. So they don't look exactly the same um, because I did it really fast right before this. Plus I'm gonna use this clip in DaVinci Resolve. Another thing that I will do to almost all of my GoPro footage is noise reduction. And you want to do noise reduction before you do any type of color grading. So what I do is I will grade it first, but then I will add my noise reduction, which I do with neat video inside Final Cut Pro. And then I will take my noise reduction here and put it in front of my color grade. That way, when you do the noise reduction, it doesn't include your color grade. It includes the raw file, which is what you want to reduce noise on. I'm going to link a video in the description below on how to use Neat Video. It's the tutorial that I used when I first kind of learned how to do it. So uh, check that out if this is going to be your route for reducing noise. You don't have to do noise reduction, but it does help quite a bit. It helps clean it up quite a bit. Just remember that if you are doing noise reduction, you want to do it before you do any color grading. All right, so now I'm going to get rid of this because this was the one that I did uh, in the first place and it has already been sharpened, so we're not going to do that. Uh, and now we're just going to use this clip. So let's just get rid of the noise reduction here because we don't need that. Clip has been rendered out. Okay, so to export out of Final Cut Pro, we're just going to go up to here and click export file. This is exporting a raw Apple ProRes master file. So this is going to export the video out just as it looks right here. No compression, nothing like that. So I'm just going to export this out as example and that will export out. Okay, now we are in DaVinci Resolve. So here is where the sharpening happens. First thing that you wanna do inside DaVinci Resolve is go down to your settings in the lower right. Click on that, change your timeline resolution to 1920 by 1080. You can change your timeline frame rate to 30 or you can just leave it because once you drop a clip in the timeline, it'll change it automatically for you. All right, and then we are going to import the clip. We have our clip in our timeline here and we're gonna go down here at the bottom and go to color. All right, so here's the clip. Now you're going to go up to the top right and click on nodes. Okay, so we have our first node right here. And now you wanna go up to color and nodes and add a serial node. Bring that up top. Now add a layer node, which will be on the bottom. Okay, so it's basically splitting the clip in two here. This top one, you're going to want to go down here and click on the RGB mixer and then go down to monochrome. And then on the bottom, you wanna to go to your color wheels. Actually, we're gonna change them to color bars, okay? And then we're gonna drag the whites of our lift all the way down, our gamma all the way down, and our gain all the way down, okay? So now we have a luma chroma split. Okay, so the colors are here, the luminance is here, or the brightness. And then we are going to go over to the mixer, and then you're going to control, click on it, go down to composite mode, and go to add, okay? So now it's back to normal, right? Now you have a nice split here. So when you sharpen your clip, you just wanna sharpen the luminance. This will give you a better, cleaner result in the end. To do this, you click on your luminance, and then you go to MD, right here is your mid detail. So I'll put that at somewhere between 30 and 40. So for now, we'll just do 35. 
Okay, and then down here, this is where you do your sharpening with th this right here. Make sure that it is on sharpen, okay? Sharpen right here in the middle because sometimes this will change, it'll be on blur, put it on sharpen, okay? And then to adjust your sharpening, you can drop this down. The more you drop it, the sharper your clip will get. Do you see that? And the higher you go, the blurrier it gets. So normally I will go somewhere around 0.47 or 0.46. Depending on the clip and how much detail is in the clip, I will go somewhere around there. So for this one, uh, I think 0.46 is pretty good. And then you can scale your sharpening over here. So this is how much of your clip is actually being sharpened. And I'll put that usually at like 0.5. And actually maybe we could back this off a little bit. It looks a little over sharp. So we can put this at 0.47. That's not too bad. We can zoom in a little bit just to kind of see how much we want to sharpen. And this is, and you can see exactly how much we're doing here. Let me put these all back to normal. So this is the clip when I brought it in before I did anything. And now we go 35. We'll put this at 47. Maybe we should do 46. 46, and then, you know, here's your scaling. Just remember, you don't want to over sharpen. Okay, so that's what we are looking at right there. So there's our clip. Does look a little sharp. Put that back to 47. You kind of just have to play around with it. And when it comes to a full video, sometimes I'll put the same sharpening for the entire thing. Sometimes I will cut it up here in the edit uh, tab, you know, with the blade. And I will do specific sharpness levels for this clip, for this clip, and so on. Once you get your sharpness locked in and you're ready to export, this is how you export. You're going to want to go to deliver. And then these are the export settings to get high quality 4K video on YouTube, even though that we're working with a 1080p clip. Up here on the left, you click on YouTube and then you click back to custom. Okay, name your clip, example, upload, location. Uh, you know, to my desktop. Down here on video, change this to the format to QuickTime Kodak H.265. Resolution, very important. If you are exporting it to your phone or something like that, then you can leave it at 1920 by 1080. But for YouTube, 16 by 9 to YouTube, you can upscale this. Okay, so you want to click on 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD, which is 4K. Frame rate is good, just leave that. Down here to the quality, I will restrict it to about 100,000. I kind of go overkill a little bit on this just to ensure high quality. Encoding profile, change this to main 10. Main 10, basically the bottom line is, is that it's going to help with color banding, which can happen a lot like in the sky or something like that. It's where you see like the little lines um, and different shades of colors. When you change the encoding profile to main 10, it's going to help blend all of that together so you don't see it. Other than that, you don't have to touch anything else. Then you hit add to render queue. It's going to warn you about add higher resolution renders. Hit add, it's gonna be okay. And then render. When the rendering is done, you're done. Once your video is uploaded and processed on YouTube, you'll be able to change that resolution to 4K and watch it in crystal clear resolution. Now, remember that there's a lot of trial and error when it comes to color grading and sharpening. Um, it's just kind of something that you have to play around with and learn over time. But I hope that this tutorial actually showed you the proper way to sharpen your GoPro footage. All right, I hope this video helped. It took me a long time to figure this stuff out. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments because I know there was a lot here. Also, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this and just GoPro content in general. I'll see you in the next one.